are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa! You should get that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Dude, turn around, show everybody. <laughs> T-shirts. Look at this, stand up. Bring you yeah. businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. Look at that, isn't that cool? That is That's cool. That's a badass shirt. Mm-hmm. You guys, I'm your host, Colin Austin, and my co-host is the connoisseur of, cu- <laughs> there's too many C's, the connoisseur of cuisine, cultivator of culture, and captain of customer service, the savant of scooters himself, Michael Dees. I give you 10 points for making him trip up on that. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Okay. What's up, man? Not much, man. How are you this morning? I am excellent. Good. Good, good. Excited to roll with this episode. Um, here we are. We are recording on what day is What's today? <laughs> September 17th is the day we're recording. This will go out on October 7th. But for us, recording today, we are three games in to Gator mm. football. Yeah, this week. How, how are you feeling right now? This you weekend just beat was tough. Kentucky this yeah, past we just weekend. beat Kentucky. Hopefully, by the time this episode airs, we're what six and zero because we would have just beat six and Auburn. Hopefully, Oof. The, seventh, <laughs> the seventh. Yeah, we would have just beat Auburn. So hopefully, we're six and zero. Okay. We lost our quarterback this week. Yeah, it was tough. That was real tough. Uh, heartbreaks for him. Uh, you know, man up, man down, man down, man up. Uh, Kyle Trask came in. He he led us to victory. So we'll see uh, what Kyle Trask has got. But we're three and zero. The only way you can get to four and zero is if you're three and zero. So there you go. We'll uh, see what we got. Keep it rolling. Yeah. Well, dude, I want to make sure to do a couple of things really quick. One, I want to wish Rebecca a happy birthday. Yeah, 21. You guys don't <laughs> understand, but Rebecca does so much to help us prepare for each episode of this podcast. She's on our team and she helps us get these show notes, keeps guests organized, and just, just make sure that the podcast goes without a hitch. And she also writes these great intros for Michael (laughs) that I have to pronounce, so there you go. So happy birthday, Rebecca. Thank you, Colin. (laughs) She's 21 today. I was like, gosh, should we break out the liquor first thing this morning? Like, what should should we do? Let's go, it's 21, baby. I'm sure there's rules um, and regulations against that we might hear about later. (laughs) (laughs) She says she's going to class. Yeah. You guys, we want to, uh, before we get started, make sure, I wanna give some love to our sponsors. You guys, this episode is brought to you by Joe and Joyce Reese's. They were on the podcast just a couple of weeks ago. They are from The Tea Shop, a local print shop that specializes in custom apparel and promotional products. They're Gainesville's one-stop shop for custom apparel and more. They made these awesome shirts. So I've been promised that the by now the, the shop is up. So at wognv.com, okay. <laughs> actually, as of recording, it's not up. But right. I've been promised that by the time the episode airs, it will be up. You can buy one of these t-shirts. All the money will go to funding the podcast and our production here. So thank you so much for your support there. Uh, make sure to find Joe and Joyce at the teashops.com. That's teashops with an S dot com. And on Instagram at underscore the T, T-E-E shop. Um, you know, that's it. These are available, and if you have trouble ordering online, then just just message me direct on Instagram. I'll take care of you personally and make sure that you get the shirt of your choice. But we have three different three different shirts, and um, they're super super comfy. I love yeah, the soft nice. tees. I love the soft tees. I always feel like they're a little bit like longer, and I'm a tall guy, so I feel like you know. I work fat people. Which one? Which, which <laughs> extra John? Large. Which one are you gonna get? Extra. Size or which no, one? Sure. Oh, I'm getting all three, but yeah, XL, X, XL, maybe. Send him that invoice later today. Let me make a yeah. note. Send John yeah, I need invoice. T-shirts. Send John invoice. Cool. Yeah. Um, and the nonprofit shout out for today, you guys. Sun Country Sports is having their Howlapalooza 2019. It's going to benefit the March of Dimes and the Phoebe Louise Dooley Foundation. It's Sunday, October 20th from 3 to 6 p.m. at Sun Country Sports West. They're going to have food, drinks, um, including a beer garden for the adults, Yay. and games, hay rides, haunted houses, bounce houses, and like so much more. I feel like maybe I should like show up in my Deadpool costume. You should. I mean, <laughs> is we that, keep, we like, keep is hearing that? about you like doing it, and I feel like it Dude, never works out. So my I want to see it. Deadpool costume is on. legit, legit. Yeah, maybe I'll wear it on the show. I just 
it'd be tough to talk oh, to the mask. Yeah. Halloween show. Yeah, be <laughs> that'd be cool though. Anyway, anyway, be so be sure to check them out. You can buy the tickets at the door or online in advance. So just go, uh, just go Google it, search it, find it. Uh, but su- support our local nonprofits. And um, you guys, like, that's it. I'm ready to get into the show. And he's already commented in our, in our like, <laughs> who's pre- this John pre-roll. guy? Who's this John guy? We like, <laughs> you guys, today on the show we have John Dar, the CEO of Dar Shackout Insurance Agency, one of my really good friends, somebody who's denied me about coming on the podcast at least. A dozen times and Mm-mm. today he is Mm-mm. finally <laughs> here john welcome to the show man i'm so excited i can't even tell you <laughs> tell, please tell us how so, excited are you so tell yeah us. so i i told my wife i said hey i'm going on the wo gnv podcast and she's like what what are you going on what are you doing? oh colin yeah the one that i introduced so every time colin and i are together and the other day we had lunch and and my wife and, and kids were in the car and i'm like dude you got to come meet my wife and kids. You were such a, it was like a famous person meeting my family. And they drove up in the car and they're like, hey, Colin. And I'm I'm like, you just met Colin Austin. I was so excited. And they're like, dad, you are such a nerd. You're such a dork. (laughs) You're such a nerd. Which which one of your daughters got the the scooter? Courtney. Courtney. Courtney got the scooter. You're like, so, and you told Courtney, when when we ran into like oh like take take a take a selfie with all of us yeah I, like, or a snap like, I was so ex- or yeah something. I was and so excited like, I'm like Courtney dude. you get to meet the scooter king of, she was of like, the oh my world God, dad stop you get to <laughs> put a still you know and she was like oh dad holy moly dad really yeah and so but my kids do that to me all the time your family's really sweet they're great they are wonderful that they put up with my crazy antics <laughs> and stuff but they're so why uh, why did it take you this long to get on the show so the story is the real story <laughs> is that when the, when the podcast started colin called me and he says hey you know we want you to be on the podcast and i'm like dude i'd, I'd love it i'd be honored to be on the podcast and uh, so he gave me a date. He says, okay, here's the date. And I was out of town and I couldn't do it. And uh, and uh-huh. he's like, "Sure, all right, well, um, okay, we'll just move on. And that was like 150 episodes ago or whatever. <laughs> it was a long time Dude, ago. this is episode, what episode are we on? Yeah, what episode is this? 74. 74. So it was 72 <laughs> episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then he never asked me again. And, and I watch all the episodes and, I, and all these awesome friends of mine that have been the episodes, James Bates and John Spence and Tim Broom and, and Mitch Glazer and, and... Not the who's who. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's just... I was like, he's never going to ask me again. He's, he's <laughs> just moved on to the stardom uh, of guests, like you know, social media stars. Let this be a lesson. If you're invited to the show, if you're invited to the show, the answer Don't is miss. yes. Yes, do the answer is yes. Not miss because otherwise, it will take seventy three episodes to get you to back. Get invited back. I agree. So for do sure. not deny. Don't go out of town. Whatever <laughs> you're doing, cancel I, all. All vacation plans, all like, trips, all business. Trips, I think it was like everything. my twentieth anniversary too. It was like, oh man, I really want to be on the podcast. Come on, what's more important? The, the, like, right? Let's it's, choose here: a, the podcast or, or the twentieth. Yeah. Do you hear that somebody's going on vacation and then you just invite yeah, them that week yeah. so you can leverage them later? <laughs> Only what? the people that he really doesn't <laughs> want to be on the, the podcast. Lessons, all the lessons that I'm learning through yeah. this. Let me see. Invite the insurance guy <laughs> to come on the podcast or. Somebody really interesting and exciting. That's sort of how it went, I'm sure. You know, so it's it's easy. It's easy to lay it off. It's like, oh, the, the insurance guy. Yeah. Right. But dude, I have been fascinated by you and your business since since I've gotten to know you. Um, I actually think um, Paul at Cardinal Signs mm-hmm. originally made the introduction. Mm-hmm. Um, good friend of mine, just a great guy. And, you know, mm-hmm. I... Uh, Ever since I stepped foot in your agency, I've always been super fascinated by the culture. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we and we, these are things that you and I talk about all the time because yeah. I feel like I'm always bouncing cultural stuff off of you. So I'm like so excited. Remember in the days when I used to text you and it, it would be like St. Patty's Day and I would text Colin and go, hey dude, 
what are you doing for your folks? What are you doing for your people at, at you know, just New Scooters for Less? And he's like, oh, I'm doing I'm whatever. I'm wearing green. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm showing I'm, up to work in green. Whatever it was. Care? Yeah. And I'm like, all right, that'll give me an idea. I got to do this. You know, so it was like this. It, it was, it was, okay, so it was reversed. When I met him, it was much more of like, I'm a fan, huge fan, because he's so connected with technology. And, and you know, I felt like, it, I felt like the conversations kind of went like this. All right, he would. I'd ask him a question, and then he'd go, "Come on, John, come along, come along, come into the, you know, come into the, the 20th century, you know, that kind of stuff." So, and he was always, and you were always so nice to me. You know, I felt like I was the old guy trying to you learn know, and and stuff like that. But that's that's the truth of the relationship to me. That's how I perceive the relationship. And but. it's funny because I, you know, I'm I'm about to go speak in Ohio um, mm-hmm. on the UCE, mm-hmm. you know, company culture stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, and if I'm being honest, like I feel like we've been in a little bit of a, a lull. Mm-hmm. Just kind of, you know, it's gotten a little stagnant. As and an like, entrepreneur, you do that. I know, and it I'm just kind of like, this. It and I'm like oh, right. I'm like, man, like, you know, it, it's good because I'm constantly putting out content talking about how culture is the lifeblood of the organization. Mm-hmm. And if anything, all that content is doing is, is holding me accountable yeah. to making sure that we are, you know, this this representation of company culture because there has there's there's a lot of eyeballs on this on new scooters for less as being this leader in in company culture and and I'm honored for that but man when when we slip up and when we fail I'm like mm-hmm. oh my gosh like all these eyeballs are on us and we're terrible right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know so it's uh, it's always good affirmation because I feel like in some of those moments I'm I'm contacting you being like help right. <laughs> right. and and you help you help pull me through so. Uh, well, let's. I want to definitely circle back to that because you guys are even like recognized for your company culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get like you get like these major awards and stuff. I've never gotten an award for company <laughs> culture, so I don't even know what you're talking about. Looking to us, you're number like, one in my heart, Colin. Yeah, you go. <laughs> but uh, but before we, <laughs> I'm just gonna move on. All right, uh, and pass. Yeah. And, and before but before we like dive into the questions or wherever this discussion may lead us. Um, you know, I want like let's let's throw it back, man. Let's peop, let's tell everybody your story, how you got mm-hmm. to where you are today, mm-hmm. and because now you have like how many team members? Like 50, 55. 55. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you got a, a nice large organization over there in locations Seven. across the state, mm-hmm. across the state, or mm-hmm. even yeah. elsewhere. Yeah, Pensacola all... to Palm Beach, basically. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So take us back, man. How'd you get into the insurance business? So I was playing golf in college at a little school in South Carolina. I went to I went to Florida for three years and uh, transferred up there to to play golf. and And when I got done um, with college, I was going to uh, turn pro and play professionally and that sort of thing. And uh, this is a, I tell all my friends I've told my friends this conversation. So I I went to my father who a lot of people know, but he was he was on the first national championship team at the University of Florida that they won in any sport in 1968. They, Florida, a lot of people don't know that. Won the national championship in golf in 1968, and it was the first one that they won. So he's really good, really great player, played professionally, um, still to this day can beat me like a drum mm-hmm. at, at any 72 years old, right? So I'm 22 or 23 years old and I get done with school and I said, dad, I, I, you know, I'm thinking about turning pro and, and, you know, going and trying on tour. And he says to me, he says, son, let me ask you a question. I said, yes, sir. He says, uh, can, can I beat Jack Nicholas? See, he, he, you know, could, can he, could he beat Jack Nicholas? And I went, uh, no, sir, you, you couldn't beat Jack Nicholas. And he says, well, can you beat me? And then I said, uh, well, no, most of the time, no, I can't beat you. He says, well, what makes you think you're going to beat Jack Nicholas?" And I went, oof, you're right. Uh, he says, go get your insurance license. You'll be way better off. And literally, that was the conversation. So I said, okay, all right, I'll come in and, and shadow you in, at, at his office and kind of learn what you do. 
Oh, did you feel like that was like <laughs> this dream shattered, crushed, down? shattered? Really? Did you feel that way, or I mean, was it like, oh, you're right? I like, knew, like, you know, I, I was pretty good, but I wasn't a world beater, so it was gonna be a long road. I knew, you know, and I knew enough great players that the lifestyle of a tour player is not all that glamorous. I mean, you see the Phil Mickelsons and the Tiger Woods and all that kind of stuff on TV. Yeah. And it's, you know, flying private jets and, you know, all that kind of stuff. 90% of the guys on tour don't fly private jets and they don't have this glamorous lifestyle. So literally, they, you know, Monday they do a practice round, Tuesday they do a practice round, Wednesday they play in a pro-am with three guys from Des Moines, Iowa that shoot 153 and then they play a tournament Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Sunday afternoon if they make the cut they travel to the next place and they do it all over again. So it's 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 really not that great of a lifestyle and I knew that going in. So there's a part of me that's like, you know, I really want to have a family and have some sort of life. I don't want to be on that on that tour really. And, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I was a business major, so I studied finance. And I, when I went to Florida, I was a business major and all that. So I knew I always wanted to be an entrepreneur of some sort. And, but, you know, so he was, if you knew my father, he's very honest and direct. He will, he will shoot you straight. He will tell you sometimes, you know, you don't necessarily want to hear what he's going to tell you. So, so your um, dreams were shattered. So, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, not really. I, I, I kind of knew what he was talking about, but. You know, it wasn't, it, it was, I was, a, I've always been kind of self-aware, so of, of what's going on around me. So I, I knew it was, it was a long shot. And, you know, then he started telling me about the insurance business and I fell in love with it, literally. Cool. That's awesome. You know, just from day one, it's crazy. I'd still enjoy it. I still. So what was day one like? <laughs> so it was, um, once I got. And how my, old were you? 23. 23, okay. Yeah, so I just got done and he had just started an agency. He was, uh, work for an independent and then Nationwide recruited him to start his own Nationwide agency in 92. So when I graduated in 93, he really didn't have anything to give me per se. All he could do is teach me how to do it. So I went in and and literally just sat in his office for the first three months, sat in his office every single day and just watched what he did. And he was one of these people that, like I said, he will tell you like it is and I remember sitting in there one time and he's got this young couple in there and he's telling them, hey, you know, they need to have a certain uh, insurance. And they're, they're like, and they said, well, you know, we want to think about it. He's okay, no problem. So he gets up and he walks out and he closes the door of the office and leaves me in the office with this young couple. And it was time to talk about it. And he was coming back in like, when they're done talking about it. It wasn't, hey, I'll let you go home tonight and I'll call you tomorrow. It was, hey, you're gonna talk about it right now because I believe that if you get in that car and drive home and you have an accident and you don't have the coverage that I think you should have, I'm not gonna sleep very well at night and I'm not going there. He's like, yes works for me, no works for me, maybe doesn't work. And it was so awkward because I'm sitting in, I'm 23 years old and I'm sitting in this room with this young couple and they got to talk about it, you know, cause he just left the room and closed the door. And I'm like, oof, <laughs> this is really weird. But that's how I learned. That's how I learned, you know, he just did his thing and I, and I um, sat there and watched and, and just, you know, observed what he did every day. So that's kind of at first. So did they get the insurance? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was, oh yeah. There was lots of times when he was, I mean, he just, he wanted an answer one of the one way or the other. Yeah. He didn't, you know, you can turn him down. I mean, he didn't close every single one for sure, but he believed in his uh, um, advice so strongly that he believed, he's like, look, you, you're putting your family at risk getting in that car and driving home. Yeah. If you don't have the right stuff, you're, you, and I'm not gonna be the guy that didn't advise you on the right stuff. And you know, I don't wanna be that guy that you drove home, got in an accident, and you don't have the right coverage, and, and I'm not, it's not me. So you know, I learned that, and I'm very passionate about that, trying to you know, re, just 
trying to go through the process and help people understand, hey, it's important. And right now people could care less about what's on their insurance. It's, yeah. it's just Geico's made it save 15%, save 15%, say, and it's it's sad because we see stuff all the time where people get in accidents and they don't have a clue as to what they bought. Mm-hmm. And it's because they're eight, they don't have an agent, number one, typically, but if they do, their agent didn't ask them the question or didn't try to help them through the process. But anyway, that's, I still remember my first client, I still have my first client, to, um, her name was Susan, and um, she was about, at the time, probably 24, she's just graduated, and she comes in with a, you remember a Mitsubishi 3000 GT? Mm-hmm. You remember that car? Okay, so she dri- she drives up in a brand new Mitsubishi 3000 GT, and she walks in and she's like, okay, I need to get insurance. And I don't even remember how she found us, because our office was on 43rd Street, which is not close to where most students live. She might have had an apartment up there or something, I don't know. but. She came in and I'm, you know, in those days I'm typing on the computer trying to get a, a price and all that and, and I show her, I said, okay, here's how much it's gonna be. She's okay. And I went, oh, okay, my first sale. <laughs> I had no, no idea what I was doing. So, that you know, easy? And, and it was like, yeah, and it was that, it was that easy. But, um, you know, it's been, it's, it's been a real treat and a pleasure to be in the industry I'm in. And I know people think, Oh, this guy's crazy. He's how do you like insurance as much as you do? Yeah, insurance is boring. Bro. It's really boring. <laughs> <laughs> it is really boring. Um, but so, it's so, about people. I all mean, right. So real quick. So how how long were you working with your dad before you kind of? So fourteen years. Over, 14 so he years. retired in two thousand eight, and this is another great story. Of the day that he retired. So. At the end, when 2000, he knew he was gonna sell the agency to me and retire at the end. So he we used his, we, he really didn't even have an office. He wasn't coming in a whole lot. So I, I set up a little, uh, a little desk next to my desk in my office so that when he came in, he hated computers, first of all. He thought they were a fad and they were going away. <laughs> <laughs> he loved- Wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Dad. Uh, he loved face to face. He loved people. He loved engaging with people, and you know that kind of stuff. So, comes in one day, and we had taken his keyboard. Somebody else's keyboard broke, so I unplugged his keyboard and I took it to to this, whoever's you know needed a keyboard. And he comes in and he sits down and he goes, uh, "Where's the keyboard?" And I said, "Well." Dad, you know, now you just talk to computers. You don't actually <laughs> need to like type anything, you know? And he's like, oh, okay, all right. Um, computer on. <laughs> and I'm going, uh-oh, <laughs> he believes me. <laughs> he, he believes me. Uh, computer on. Hey, this thing's not working. I went, <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding, Dad. It doesn't work that way. He's like, "Okay, I quit." <laughs> huh? <laughs> what do you mean you quit? I quit. I retire. It's been the number one biggest mistake I made in my 26-year career. I just had my number one salesman walk out the door. He was still producing tons of business. Was this because of a joke? Yeah, he's like, all right, I quit. I'm not coming back. And he didn't. He didn't come back. Now, <laughs> if I ever make a joke with you or something, Mike, <laughs> don't ever do that. Like, <laughs> now to be fair, he was leading up to it. It was. I knew he was going to retire. I just didn't know. We didn't like set a date, so to speak. You know. Gotcha. So he he so he did. He walked out, and and to this day, Ray Shackow and I, my partner and I, always kid. We're like. So if I come in one day and my keyboard's missing, right? That's, that's a sign. That's the sign. <laughs> He's like, it's time for you to so move we, on. Yeah, we joke around, but um, but yeah, that's 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 uh, that's. So when he retired, um, we transitioned to we were nationwide captive agents at the time. So I transitioned into this program with Nationwide that was supposed to last three years, and. Eight months into that program, Nationwide decided to make us all independent agents. So, so they came to me and they said, "Okay, we're making all independent agents. 
which was great for me. And I mean, we've taken off. I think at the time we were maybe 10 or 11 people, you know, size wise. And now we're over 50. So it's been, it's been a great you know, run from 2008 when we transitioned to independent because it just gives us so many more carriers to represent. And, you know, it gives us more products and more solutions. Does your dad have an Alexa or Google Home or anything now? <laughs> <laughs> I just have to know so he, you can talk to it. <laughs> he not only, he, I don't think he even knows what that would be. Okay. I, 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 I need to get it. Because 10 years later, you can I, actually tell your stuff to turn a, on. You know what? That's gonna, I'm going to get him that for Christmas. I'm going to be I, like, dad, here's, here's what you need to do. You need to, he can barely text. I mean, he can, like, if I sent him a text, for the longest time, I'd send him a text. And then... I, I knew I couldn't get a text back, so all my texts were, "Hey, this is a one-way text because he's not texting me back. If he needs something, he'll call me." Yeah, but I email myself all the time. Yeah, by talking to Siri. Really? Like, yeah, and so I'll be like driving right here. Do you have something. a nickname for yourself, or are you just like calling big, all the girls? Big. <laughs> Uh, Big C. That, that MySpace name will never die. <laughs> Every time. It'll never die. Um, no, just like if I'm listening to something or if I'm listening to an audiobook and it like sparks an idea or something, sure. I'll just, and I'm driving, and I'm always listening to that stuff while I'm driving. So then I'll just be like, I got Siri right here. I'll be like, hey, Siri. Yeah. Please send send an email to to Colin Austin. Yeah. <laughs> like send an email to Colin Austin. Okay, what would you like the subject to be? Um, Remember to tacos. The, yeah, <laughs> remove <laughs> Mike's <laughs> keyboard. Yeah, <laughs> remove my. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> remove the subject. Remove Mike's keyboard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what would you like to say? Make sure you remove Mike's keyboard tomorrow morning when you show up for work. Okay. Do you want me to send it? Yes. yes. Send. And like, so I mean, I'm sending emails all the time, mainly to myself, but like mm -hmm. without touching a keyboard see just by speaking i've, so I've it's, actually it's happening thought about going back to my dad and say dad can you come back and you know because now you can really do yeah, this. I, really we can do this <laughs> oh no funny guy uh, that train left the station you're done i'm like okay and that was in 08 that was in 08 all right yeah. so there you go nine years later not yeah it's definitely happening yeah but he taught me a lot i mean he was definitely one of the greatest salespeople i've ever known he, he was what's the biggest okay so what's the biggest sales lesson that you've learned from him easy okay so it's one word okay and he taught me this and it and i've to this day i teach this to my people and it's only one word it's three letters and it's ask if you want to be a great salesman nowadays especially all you really have to do is ask there were many times when he would say john until you ask we're at no unless you ask a question how are you ever gonna get off of no? So you have to ask. Now you can ask it a bunch of different ways and some questions are better than others, you know, and you'll improve your chances depending on how you ask the question. But asking is the key to sales. It's a secret to sales, to me, it's always been that. And he was, he lived that. I mean, and I still, to this day, I, I tell my people all the time, just ask. I don't even care how you ask. Hmm. Ask them if uninsured motorists is important to them and their family. Ask them if you wrecked your Tesla, would you be upset and you didn't have coverage? Ask them, do they own a boat? Ask them if they own an RV. Ask them if they need an umbrella. Just ask, I don't care how, just ask. And that's been, you know, that's probably by far the best advice he gave me or the best lesson that he gave me was just ask. It's a good lesson, man. Mm -hmm. So another question, primarily in terms of scaling oneself, mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. the one, one of the things that I've really admired about you is I mean, you do all the insurance for our business. So if I ever have a, and, and, and again, I don't know how many relationships you have like ours, mm -hmm. but I mean, I'm like texting you stuff all the time. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm like, hey man, yeah, this is this is happening. This just Hold happened, up. what do like, I do? What do I do? Yeah, yeah. exactly, like, mm -hmm. you know, and so the, I've always believed that when it comes to, to sales, when it comes to um, business in general, like 
Mm-hmm. I mean, we've been talking about this multiple times, talking about like relationships, relationships. right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's been an, actually, it's been an ongoing theme for me for like last couple of weeks, talking about the value of relationships, sure. right? And how vitally important that is, it is to business. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but the problem is like, you only have so much time. Mm-hmm. Right, so mm-hmm. like you're getting, if, if you have a lot of relationships like ours and you're getting texts from me mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, some done and 500 up. other me's, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, at some point, like you max out, sure. right? Like there's just no more time. Yep. So how are you scaling that personal touch, like yourself, how are you scaling your personal attention to these clients? Um, yeah, so you're you're limited for sure. You can't, you know. We have, I think, we have over fifteen thousand clients in the age. Let me just let me just be clear, really quick. I mean, I definitely want to make sure that I'm prioritized yeah. over all that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, if you come up with news, yeah. If you ever want to be on this podcast again, <laughs> yeah. stop, if you stop taking my texts, <laughs> all of a sudden hey, I'm getting ignored. Here's the deal: if you stop taking my texts, <laughs> I'm gonna stop taking your texts. How about that? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, at some point, it, it yeah, it got to the point where I had so many clients, I couldn't, I just couldn't literally do anything. I couldn't scale myself. So I had to figure out, all right, I need associates. I need somebody that can join me that I can hand off new relationships to and say, hey, here's, you know, Paul, Blaine, Heather, any one of my associate agents that have worked with me and learned how I do things and the way I do things and what's important to me. So when I bring in these agents that are underneath me, a lot of the same um, processes and beliefs have to align with how I do things. And that's really why we've grown to what we can grow. And and to this day, I don't think I've written any new policy in 2019 in my name. All of the new stuff that I write, I will bring an agent in, an associate in, and go, okay, here's the deal. Here's Joe Prospect. And you know, here's what we talked about. Now you guys go you know, close it, close it and, and build a relationship so that if Joe needs something, Joe needs to be able to email you or call you or whatever. Um, it's, it's been difficult because I enjoy the agent role. Mm. It's, it's something I, I cut my teeth on. I, it's all, I mean, it's all I knew how to do mm-hmm. for a long time and I enjoy it and I still to this day enjoy it. The problem is what you're saying. I, I don't have enough time to do it right, to do it the way I want to do it and to do it the way I did it in the past. So I have to have these other folks come in and help me and train them and teach them. And, you know, that's been, that's the only, and it's hard because, you know, I want to jump in there and write policies because that's what I did for, you know, what, 20 years. Um, but now I can't do it. It's not fair to the customers because I just don't have the time to do it. And I'm not bringing them as much value as I did before because I'm not in the trenches like I was. So that's why I learned long ago, my people are vitally important. They are the number one in my list of things. And it's not necessarily my my customers. And that's really a hard thing to say. And a lot of people are gonna be surprised by that my people, my employees are more important than my customers. Because if I have customers, but I don't have an employee or a team of people that understand and believe the same things that I believe, the customer's gonna suffer because I can't possibly do it all myself. So I believe that your employees and your team and your culture is so much more important than the rest of things. Me too. That's why we hit it off. Years ago, Mike, you too. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm totally on board. But to, to that point too, I mean, I think that I mean, I've I've known you for fifteen years, and I've studied under you, and I think it's that same kind of thing. You find people that that are like you, and that identify and, and find value in the same core of beliefs that you do, and it makes that kind of stuff easy, easier, yeah. as easy as it can be. There's a trend right now in the insurance business that they go out and they get these agents that sell, sell, sell. And then as soon as they sell them the policy, they go to this 800 service number and you know, Timbuktu, wherever. Right. 
I just, I don't believe that. I don't believe that's what really people want. But it's- Cause you're not building the relationship. Exactly. If I'm your agent, like Colin said, he texted me. Now I might not do dig the ditch, so to speak. Like if he calls me and says, hey, we bought a building or whatever. I might not actually do the change on the policy, but he and I are communicating, hey, I bought this building, it's whatever it is, you know, whatever the details are. And then I go to my staff and go, okay, here's what we need to do, this policy, da, 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 da. But because of your attention to the relationship, like you, the, the what those other places won't do is three days later, follow up, you know, cause you always text me back saying, hey, I just wanna make sure that everything went smoothly. Yep. Yep. You know, is there anything else that they, you know what I mean? And yep. like, you're, you're not getting that with, you know, in one of those other scenarios. Typically not, and the industry is pushing more that Towards way. that direction. Yeah, because it's more profitable. I'm not the most profitable agency on the planet, but I believe that we win awards and we have grown exponentially because we're the best at people, at best at relationships, at the best at being there, you know, when, when people need us. I had a text yesterday, a friend of mine texted me and said, hey, my son just got in an accident, what do I do? You know, and I called her back and said, hey, here's what we need to do, let me call him, let me talk to him, you know, that kind of thing. I don't think she's getting that from an 800 number. You know, and that's right. and that's when you need to be there for your customers is, is when that kind of stuff happens. It's a, you know, it's a five minute phone call. It's not like it's, you know, four hour surgery. It's, hey, I can help you. Here's what, here's what this is gonna look like and we're gonna walk you through the process and it makes people feel better. So it's and, like growing a, you know, a big time agency with a small time, well, a small town feel like. Absolutely. Little, you know, so, you absolutely. know. Now you're at 55 people. I mean, how how do you maintain control, I guess, mm-hmm. the, the culture mm-hmm. with that? I mean, dude, like we get to 20 people and I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, like some, something happens sure. like, uh-oh, like, you know, you recognize a, a poor fit, um, sure. you know, something. Sure. That can make it tough sometimes. I mean, you know, like I strangely have aspirations to run a team of hundreds. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that I can't do that right now because I feel like I'd just be terrible. At it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but that's why I'm so fascinated. That's why I want to learn learn this stuff because I think you know scaling and and growing culture is is the most important thing and sure. and i you know the the one thing that i constantly talk about and and well and just think about is like it's it takes forever to build a healthy culture like it takes a long time it's a, a ongoing it's like an that. ongoing investment mm-hmm. all the time Absolutely. i mean we've been working on this culture for 15 years mm-hmm. and it can fall apart in a matter of seconds. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so like as companies get bigger, mm-hmm. you go from 10 people to 25 people to 50 people to 500 people. Mm-hmm. How do you you know, maintain that culture? I think it's, I would say it's not a science, it's an art and, it, and every day is different. And if you truly love people and believe in people and understand um, putting yourself in their shoes a lot of times, it probably helps me trying to figure out, okay, what is this person saying to me and why are they not successful and why are they doing what they're doing? Because they're not fitting or they're not, it's not working or, you know, and I've had lots of those hard conversations where I have to go sit down with people and go, hey, this is, it's not working. I don't know why, I'm not sure, if, you know, usually it's our fault. We've not communicated well, some way, shape or form. But those conversations are very difficult and I am terrible at them. <laughs> I am the ultimate optimist. So when I go down and sit with these people, and this has happened probably six or seven years ago, I, I brought this person into my office and it was one of these meetings where we're like this far away from a performance plan. I mean, we are really messing up here. And we sit down and we have this meeting and I'm thinking, okay, I, you know, I think I've got this person going on the right track. But it was a, hey, you're screwing up meeting, in my mind. 
right? She walks out and tells everybody she's in line for a raise. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> I am so bad at this. So, so you did not communicate clearly at all is what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> it was not even, it was here. not right. It was not even close. So what I learned was I have to have people in my organization that are better at that conversation because I'm going to look at the glass and go, okay, that is definitely half full, you know, but I need somebody to go, hey, John, it's half empty, and here's why it's half empty, and we're gonna hold you accountable for filling that cup up, because that's the hard part, and salespeople are typically not real good at that. They like to go, oh, the world's you know rainbows and unicorns, and let's go sell something, <laughs> and, you know, and that's me. I mean, that's how I've always been, so I had to figure out how do I get those people on my team and especially my leadership team so that when I need to have that conversation, I can say, hey, help me have this conversation with this person who's not doing their job and here's you know what whatever, and it's worked. Okay, and so walk me through that conversation today. With, with my staff? The person six years ago that walked out of your office, thought she was getting yeah, a raise, yeah, yeah. you're yeah. sitting down with her tomorrow. Yeah. What are you gonna say? What's different? Well, I probably won't be the one sitting down. With that. <laughs> okay, I mean that's <laughs> you know I so we have a we have a leadership team in the agency now that are probably seven different people, and I would go to if that person's not a leader, if not person's not on the leadership team, I will go to her or his boss and say, hey, here's what's going on with this. I need you guys to figure this out. Is this person the right fit? Are they in the right seat on the bus? Are they, is there some miscommunication about whatever, whatever the issue is. So it's much more of a team effort than it is me just sitting down with this person and going, hey, you're not very good and you're just not, you know, doing what we need you to do. It's different. Now, if it's on the leadership team, I'll bring in somebody else with the leadership team and we'll have a, a, a joint conversation because it's, you know, nobody in your organization wants to screw up. They're doing it. There's some reason typically that they're not being effective in one way, shape or form. And, you know, I don't like confrontation. I've always hated confrontation. Me too. And, uh, you know, I'm not good at it. So, but you need, when you get to that size, when you have hundreds of people, you need somebody that is good at it. And we found people that are very good at confrontation and, and do it very well. And you know one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie. Jamie. He's Jamie. my HR guy. Jamie's a rock star. Jamie is an absolute rock star. Do you have a fear of rock stars getting recruited from you? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. He's a rock star. He's a rock star. And, you know, one of the things that we just started was that we call it DSI HR Solutions. And it was because he was such a rock star. And for those of you out there that are employees and work for an organization, you need to be in an organization that if you are a rock star, they'll expand for you and bring you opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that's really where DSIHR Solutions came about. Jamie was such a rock star. I said, dude, we're only 55 people. You could run a division of 500. I'll never get to 500 by the time you're gonna get recruited by somebody else and I'm gonna lose you and I don't wanna lose you. Yeah. So I said, let's go figure out how do we help other businesses with their HR, onboarding, employee manuals, recruiting, all of the things that every time I sit down with a small business, it's almost 100% that that's gonna be their problem. Yep. Their problem is people, I can't find people that show up, I can't find people that wanna work, I can't, I can't find people that once they are on my team, you know, are engaged, I can't find, you know, I don't know what to do, um, in, in, I had one, one guy call me one time and he says, Hey, um, I just found some marijuana in the back of one of my employees trucks and I don't know what to do. And I went, I don't either, but Jamie does. So I put them together and there is a actual process for <laughs> what you should do in that situation. And you know, he's good at that stuff. Yeah. So this client of mine calls up and, and he's like, all right, 
here are the steps. We, you know, we're going to do this, and then we're going to do that, and then we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And the small business owner's like, oh my gosh, this is wonderful because I wanted to fire him on the spot, and right. I get it. But it's but it's so. It's also the accountability for the business owners, in my opinion. What I mean by that is like, you know, I, when I look at things like sales tax audits or audits by the Department of Labor, it's not a matter of um, if it's going to happen, it's a matter of when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) So like for me, I'm like, all right, like I just wanna make sure that all my, the stuff that I absolutely, like we, let's be honest, no entrepreneur on the face of the planet gets in business to deal Do with sales tax I-9s, audits. W-4s, yep. sales tax, like we don't get in business nope. for this stuff ever, nope. Nope. <laughs> right? We get in business because we have this purpose that we know that we're meant to fulfill yep. on the planet Earth, yep. right? Like that's why we get in business. And that's not it. And that's definitely not it, but these are the things that come with the territory and so for to be able to just hand them off to Jamie. <laughs> Right. Like, here you go, buddy. Here, yeah. Like, you know, I mean, but that's, but that's really it for us. Like, I mean, he's just been a tremendous help in trying to make sure that everything is sound mm-hmm. and that we have all of our ducks in a row. So when that, when those, that time comes, mm-hmm. we're prepared. And yeah. We're ready. Um, but like, uh, it's, it's definitely awesome to be able to run through those scenarios, if you will, and, you know, make mm-hmm. sure. I don't know, he's, he's definitely an asset, but I, I also, it's funny, because I talked to John about the same thing about scaling. I'm like, all right, so how are you gonna scale Jamie? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, it's the same, yeah, it's we the had same conversation. conversation. Yeah, it's the same like, conversation for like, sure. Dude. And it's, yeah, and absolutely, and that's, you know, that's to answer your question about culture and tr- when, you, when you get to 50 people or whatever, that's the key, is finding those key people. You know, I have, good Lord, I have so many really awesome people. I have great agents. I have people that, are on there are agents on my team that literally they have a hundred evangelists of hey uh, Janet's awesome Janet it, you know and I'll get texts like oh my god she is great and I just have so many of those folks uh, you know I wish I could name them all is but that Katie's mom Janet is it Sweeney it is yeah. okay yeah <laughs> yeah Katie used to work here yes yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, Sorry. Yeah. No, no. I that's knew like, that. That's I what knew that's, that. Those HD, ADHD moments yeah. in my life where it's like, oh, I hear a name and I'm like, yeah. Wait, Katie's isn't mom. That Katie's mom. Yep. So shout out to Katie, Katie. Yeah. and Janet. Hi. So you know, and I've got a whole bunch of people like that, and it makes it makes running the organization so much easier when you've got people like that that are, you know, are willing and they get it and they they're willing to go the extra mile for your customer and they and they're and they're willing to learn from you. I mean, that's the other part of it that's amazing to me is, you know, I still work with them almost every day where they're, they'll ask me a question and go, hey, this client's got this going on, what do you think? And I'll sit there and say, okay, well, here's what I would do or here's my, you know, whatever, here's how I can help them. And that's how you scale it is, you know, those, those type of situations. But it starts with people, period. You gotta have the right people and they have to be on board and they have to be engaged. and. You know, and, and that's, I'm very thankful for that, for sure. With the locations that you have all over the state, I mean, mm-hmm. how is it hard? Is it difficult holding account, you know, holding those locations accountable when you're here and they're there? Like, yes what's and, that process like? Yes and no, it's, again, it goes back to the person because we give them the freedom to sort of run the branch like they would run it. I mean, it, it needs to have their culture. They're in that branch, whoever the, the leader is for that branch it needs to have their culture and they need to be themselves. They need to be supported so that they can go run that branch like it's like it's theirs, and they do. I'm going down to the Leesburg branch later today. The guy down there that runs the branch is a f- superstar, rock star. He's doing s- crazy numbers every month, and it's his branch. And I, and, and I just go in there and say, all right, how can I support you? What do I need to do to help support you and give you the tools to do your job. Now it may be, hey, I'm working on three accounts and I'm I don't know what I'm I don't know what to do with these three accounts. Here's what's going on and I'll help him with those three accounts. It might be, hey, this person's um, not pulling their weight. Whatever. Okay, so I'll help you know, help them with that. But that's really to me the 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 I give them the support and the and the freedom 
to be themselves and run it like they would like to run it within certain parameters. You know, there's obviously there's issues, there've been issues over the past, but nothing that we couldn't fix. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's their, it's their um, destiny to sink or swim. And, and, you know, thankfully it's, it, we've had a lot of swimmers in the last, gosh, 10 years, 15 years for sure, since we've started opening up second branches. Um, and we're still looking to buy more branches. A lot of, I like to buy agencies. I don't necessarily start them from scratch. It's really hard to start an agency from scratch because we don't, the commissions are so low sometimes that it's, you got to do thousands of, of customers to, to get anywhere. So a lot of times what the age, the offices that we have now have all been situations where people have retired. So people have gotten to the age where they're like, Hey, I need to hand somebody the keys. Great. I, they hand us the keys. We buy it from them, and then we bring in. We try to bring in the 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 new blood or the or the younger, maybe an up and coming guy or, or or lady that can run that branch and feel like okay, I've got this book of clients that I just need to reach out to and try to build those relationships, and that's sort of the the business model of how we do what we do. Um, and Leesburg, he's been down there ten years now, and he's really just now he's got his momentum and his groove and he's and uh he's doing great it's cool man do you like um a person like susan you said that was like 14 years ago yeah first policy yeah does she still like ask for you to write her policies or get involved and and do you absolutely you feel comfortable passing those off to the other agents or do you keep those specific relationships i'll keep those okay so yeah so she'll text me or call me or email me or whatever and say hey you know, how's it going? Here's what's going on. You know, and I'll check in with her every once in a while going, hey, what's going on? She's a big time engineer down in like Jupiter area and that kind of thing. So I still, you know, every once in a while, every, hey, well, how's it going? What's up? First client ever, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Does she know that? She? Oh yeah, oh yeah, she knows. <laughs> I told her, I said, you know, and so she'll, you know, now she's married with kids and, giant house down there and that kind of stuff. So she'll, like if she needs something, she'll message me. Sometimes what'll happen is they'll build a relationship with their account manager. So they basically will will know that, yeah, they could text me or email me, Mm -hmm. but they'll have an account manager agent person that is a lot of the communication. I definitely think that's one of the hardest things, and I know you've dealt with it too, where you do build those relationships, but you've moved on into a position in the organization where you're trying to both empower people, where we talked about scaling time, Mm -hmm. and those people walk in and they only want to talk to you. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you have the option in that moment, do you do you follow you know your your protocol now that you set up and do you pass that person off or do you try to handle it? And I think oftentimes (laughs) we if we ever do find ourselves back on the front lines, we had the tendency to to want to jump in and help those situations and not staying disciplined to the structure. I think you have to be self-aware enough to, to and, and have the conversation with these clients that you're probably not the best guy to help them anymore. You know, maybe you were at one point mm-hmm. with, I don't know what you're talking about, scooter stuff or whatever, but at some point you go, hey, you know what, this person's really the better person to handle your issue. Now, if you have a problem, by all means, come to me and I'll solve the problem. But this person does this all day, every day, and knows how to do it and can solve your problem. And if you have that conversation with people, I think early, it makes it much easier. And they go, okay, great. I know I can I know I know can talk to Mike, but I'm gonna talk to Joe about an oil change, whatever, sure. you know, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's what I try to do early on in the conversation. Yes, you can always call me, but understand. And it's amazing, people understand that. I mean, they, they just get it, you know, that when they see the size of an agency, I want them to have that small town experience. So I got to put them with somebody that is, doesn't have 15,000 clients, you know, they still know what they're doing, but they still have the ability to provide the experience, the customer experience that they deserve without talking to me. I definitely like that perspective. I know that's always been one of my struggles is, is when to when to delegate back, but also feel like, you know, you've got that relationship with somebody, so you wanna, took you wanna handle forever it. Took me forever to learn that. And I also do things like- it Took me forever. In the essence of speed, uh, you know, so you, I mean, even this weekend's a good example. Um, you know, we're getting emails, sales emails on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like my team ain't answering them. Right. <laughs> it's Sunday. We closed. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, and and like not that. And don't get me wrong. Like Mike, you know, there's definitely some core people who if they they see it, they'll 
they'll yeah, jump, jump on in. it. Sure. Um, but overall, in terms of our normal, you know, sales team and stuff, uh, dealerships here they don't have they don't even have access to that email over the weekend, so they're not seeing it. Right. They don't even see. Um, it. You know, but but it comes through to my computer, so so I answer it. Mm-hmm. All right. And then it becomes a back and forth mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. conversation. It's like eight eight emails back and forth on a Sunday, um, which is fine. <laughs> but like you know, it's like I I start something, and then it gets into Monday, and and then finally like you know I ended up laying it off and said hey, said great like sales team. You know, take it from here. Uh, like I'm, I'm copying my sales team in. Yeah, I'm gonna let them take it from here. Yeah. Um, you know, they can definitely look up the value of that. Somebody wanted to trade in on a scooter towards another one. They can look up the value on that. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow when they get in, or you know, this morning when they get in and get back to you and, and yeah. that kind of thing. But, but sometimes it can, it can, it can be difficult because they've already like established that connection. If they know, I think here's the thing too though. And you can, if they know you're the owner. Hmm. I feel like that comes with a little bit of, I don't know, what's what's the word? I'm, I'm like, it, I think it's just harder if you're the owner because they know that. Harder on them or harder on I you? I think on me because what, what, I'm, what I mean, let me just try to explain it. Maybe it'll make sense because half the stuff I say on this podcast doesn't <laughs> make sense. <laughs> it's not true. Uh, you know, look, people just know that the owner is gonna be able to get it done. Mm. Right, they they know that this person has the end all decision making power mm. on on anything, yeah. um, so it's just easier to to get that. I mean, how many people? How many people? And I'm and I'm not like trying to throw down on customers or anything, but I can tell you, like, there's a lot of customers that come in and they say, "I just want to speak to the owner," mm-hmm. or I mean, sometimes a manager. I just want to speak to the manager. I want to speak to the owner. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we walk out there. Say, hey, how's it going? What can we do for you? And they ask they ask a question or they have a problem or something happens and absolutely take care of it. But literally anybody but could have. Anybody could have taken <laughs> like literally anybody in the dealership could have taken care of that problem. Mm-hmm. And again, and sometimes like the the team the team will come say, like this guy wants to talk this, to This guy owner. wants to talk to you about this. This mm-hmm. is what they're asking. And I, you know, and I know mm-hmm. like they can absolutely handle it themselves, but mm-hmm. for whatever reason, they want to talk to the owner. Mm-hmm. And that's a hard thing to get past. Like I, I, I've had a difficulty training customers to let them know that like anybody in our dealership can handle anything. I would say 95% of the cases mm-hmm. or scenarios or whatever it is, Anybody on the team can handle. Mm-hmm. Isn't entrepreneurship beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the solution? Like, <laughs> I think. I mean, m- my feedback would be again, um, try to be as clear up front as you can without, <laughs> like, like you're saying, throwing down on them. You can't. Yeah, I mean, you can't I, throw down. Obviously, on them. I handle it like super. Oh, like yeah, no yeah. problem. Happy to help. I like, would smile on the face, but in the you're in the back of your mind, you're like, man, like anybody could have handled this, and we're gonna have a difficult time scaling if I have to handle every single thing from every single customer. Sure, and I would again maybe do a couple things. Self deprecation is 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 a very uh, amazing tool. It's okay to tell that customer, hey, look, I'm the owner. I get it but I'm not the best one to handle this situation. I'm not the guy that's gonna handle the forms or whatever you've gotta fill out or get you an answer to your question as good as Susie will, whatever. <laughs> Literally, I'm the owner, I know nothing. <laughs> right. I mean, but you have to, you know, and, and maybe you even phrase it in the form of a question. You know, what if, I, what, what if we called um, Jeff, Bezos at Amazon and asked him and asked him a question like, Hey, uh, when's my item going to be here? He doesn't know. He has no idea. (laughs) I wouldn't phrase it that way to the customer, right? (laughs) But Hey, you know, I would early on as best you can say, what if I told you that Susie is a much better person on my team to help you? Yes. I'm an owner. I'm here. 
but I got to go run the business and make sure that Susie has all the answers for you and has the best answers for you. Hey, Susie, here's Bob. You guys go do your thing, you know, yeah. and, and Susie will give you a great experience. So, I mean, that's, that's the only way you can handle it because, yeah. you know, they want to meet you, the owner. I idolize you. I think you're like a famous rock star guy. And I love the fact that I can, you know, call you, text you, say, hey, Colin, what do you think of this? A lot of what you do here is because of that, that the social media, you know, your exposure out there, they want to, you, you become this sort of famous person. They don't, I don't think they really want you to sell them a scooter, although some of them I'm sure. Oh, I love that part. Pull and tug. But you have to, yeah, you have to be good enough at communicating, hey, this is not what you want me doing for you right now. Yeah, no, I mean, I, you know I, mean? I love that but like the part that you know mom mom down in miami sees a vlog mm -hmm. it's april mm -hmm. they they end up buying mm -hmm. a scooter in august they they come mm -hmm. in and they say hey it's colin here like mm -hmm. we, like we saw one of the the vlogs and we just mm -hmm. wanted to introduce ourselves so like, you have to be really I, I good love at, that part right you have to be really good at going hey how's it going like, gotta go yeah right. <laughs> and i love that and yeah you know that that part's fun um and it's the same but, way with any business, for sure. I mean, but you know, it's funny, because, uh, but still, like, I look back, I one time sat in a mastermind group, and I asked the question of a uh, highly uh, aspired, like, in entrepreneur here in Gainesville, and I said, I said, hey, like, when the customers are, like, I mean, how m many customer interactions are you having when they reach out to you with a problem, you know, like, mm -hmm. like are you handling it? How do you hand that off? Like, what do you, like, what is it? And and I was like, I was like, look, because um, I had to think the who's the CEO of Zappos? Why why am I Tony Shea? Tony Shea. I was like, <clears throat> I said, I got to think that Tony Shea. When people call and say, hey, yeah. um, is Tony can I, there? Can, can I speak to the owner, please? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I got to think that he's not taking that call. Can't. And the guy, he looks me in the eye, and I respect the hell out of him. And I won't say his name because it'd be more embarrassing for me than um <laughs> but he he goes let me know when you're tony shay <laughs> i was like damn that's awesome i, I think like, that was my dad yep yep like, <laughs> it might have been <laughs> i was like yes sir touche yeah yeah so you can't you can't freight you can't communicate to them hey i'm too busy that's not an option yeah. it really and and you know like you said i think they just want to meet you is really what they want to do but you have to communicate to them hey this person's a better fit for what we're trying to get done here yeah is there ever anything that falls specifically through the cracks that you you feel like you're the one that has to handle it on uh, in in from like, like a client like a client customer specific client yeah. or in general or both I, a Every, specific so, client. so everything is my fault Right. No, so a I get those. Everything. I feel like, so yeah. I, I actually had this example the other day where it's like, I feel like the way that we, we're set up here at uh, New Scooters for Less is like, I, I train the team to handle 99% of the problems because that's mm -hmm. that's the way that they get the masses taken mm -hmm. care of. Sure. But every now and then something happens that I feel like, mm, this is one of those 1% that I need to handle. Mm -hmm. But it's tough to get my team trained to the point where they, they know to kick that back without trying to handle it themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So so my question is, do you ever feel like there's one of those situations where like, no, this is actually a, a me thing I, like mm -hmm. I, I need to get, and how, how does that get communicated, and how do you handle those? Yes, absolutely there are those situations, and I, you know, hopefully there's not that many of them, but when it does happen, I just dive right in and, and try to solve whatever the issue is that, that I have. Most of the time, it's between two employees. Mm. So this employee thinks this employee is not being nice or whatever the situation mm. may, you know, this person didn't do their job or whatever. As much as I hate doing that, I try to jump in as best I can. And I go, hey, let's, let's all get in a room and get through this and, and try to figure it out. And there have been times that we couldn't figure it out and I had to make that tough decision where we go, okay, here's, here, I feel like it's this person's fault and that's a not a fun conversation. And how do we learn from this? You know, I try, I always try to go, hey, you made the mistake, I get it, I make mistakes, nobody's perfect. 
how do we not make that mistake again? Let's make sure that we don't make that mistake again. And, you know, and that's, that's typically how I would try to do it is to jump in and, and yeah. I'm not an expert at that. Confrontation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not an expert. Man, those are tough. It's hard. Those are tough. Well, this has been great, man. Thanks so much for coming on. My pleasure. I'm <laughs> so excited to be able to do this. Yeah, it was, it's good. It's interesting. It's, I mean, and it, and it's tough. Like, I think I'm going to consistent, like continuously, you know, pick your brain on company culture. I mean, what was the, what was the award that you guys, you guys have been recognized for this thing a couple different times, yeah, we, right? Best, we won two awards, best places to work in 2018 by two organizations. One was Florida Trend, and then one was Business Insurance Insider Magazine. Um, so we, for the last two years running, we won the Florida Trend Award and this other award. Um, the other award, we were actually the highest ranked um, of all the surveys that I got back, we were number one. We we ranked the highest, which is just you know humbling to me. I, I am so thankful and so grateful for every single person on my team. I can't even tell you how lucky I am to have some of these people are ridiculously smart and amazing people. Yeah, and I'm you know. Well, mad props to you, man. Easy. Mad props to you because I know it's incredibly, incredibly difficult to establish and continue to to build such a healthy company culture. And well, on behalf of all of the Gainesville local businesses, I want to say thank you to you guys because this podcast is a true resource, and I hope that more businesses understand and get to know Colin and what your team does because. You're, it's not a profitable venture. You're doing this for the good of community and the good of you know Gainesville. I think one day it's gonna be very popular and if you get a chance to go on the podcast out there, don't mess up. <laughs> don't say no. Don't say no. 72 don't. episodes later, yeah, you might don't be get out of town back. Because you won't. I think there will be a day that Colin has 750 DMs in his you know, Instagram, and he just he can't answer you. I mean, so. Ironically, I actually do more business today through Instagram DM than do I you? do anywhere else. Like, That's awesome. I mean, just, just the communication, the relationship building. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're meeting with uh, somebody this afternoon that I've never met never met before, but have communicated with multiple times through Instagram. And like, it's just fascinating to me that that's like the world where relationships can be established mm -hmm. through social media awesome. channels. So I would absolutely encourage anybody like to, to reach out to me. That's where I spend most of my social media time is on Instagram, at Colin Austin. Mike is at Michael Brian. D's. D's, yeah, at Michael Brian D's, but it's Brian with B-R-I-A-N. Yep, um, first middle last. So definitely, definitely reach out, say hello. So and and John, so where can everybody find you? Your insurance agency, social media, whatever. Uh, our website starshackowinsurance.com could be the longest website address in the history. Shackow spelled S C H A C K O W, and then insurance spelled out is probably. Um, we're on Facebook. Um, I don't know the handle for Facebook. I probably should. We're actually on Instagram, Twitter that kind of stuff. Uh, my email is jdar at darshackowinsurance.com. Feel free if anybody wants to email me, I'll be out, you know, I get hundreds of emails a day, which is, which is you know, I plow through them. Um, but yeah, phone number, 352-338-0552 our phone number, so reach out if we can help you in any way, we'd love to. Awesome. Fantastic. Well man, thanks so much for being such a great representative of what company culture should be like for me and for other businesses out there. It was awesome having you on the show. Gainesville world. This is the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. Give me a whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so weak. Whoa. Whoa. We will see you whoa. later. Bye. <laughs>